Taxation is a knotty problem because tax authorities generally are trying to pursue a number of different goals at the same time. So that's what we want to talk about here. And we're going to focus on one of those goals, which is the goal of efficiency. In general, tax authorities would like their taxes to be efficient, to raise revenue, and to have equity. Let's talk about efficiency. There are two components to efficiency. The first one is the cost of administration and compliance. We'll come to structural distortion later on. The tax base is the measure upon which the assessment of the tax liability is based. That is, it is the amount that is being taxed. So for the case of income tax, the taxable amount is your basic pay plus whatever taxable allowances are included and therefore are to be taxed. For property tax, the situation is a bit more interesting. Some jurisdictions levy property tax on only the value of the land without including the value of any property that is erected upon the land. So the tax base is the value of the land. Other jurisdictions include any buildings and structures that are on the land, and so it's the total value of the property. That then becomes the tax base. The marginal tax rate is the rate at which the next unit of the tax base is taxed. The average tax rate is the average rate at which the entire tax base is taxed. Let us use an example from income tax to illustrate this difference between the marginal tax rate and the average tax rate. Most countries have an income tax threshold, which is a level of income below which the tax rate is zero. You don't pay any income tax on your income up to the tax threshold. For our example here, let us say that that tax threshold is $100 a year. And any income above $100 a year is taxed at a marginal rate of 40%. So if you earn $100 a year, then your tax liability is zero. But if, for example, your annual income is $200, then the portion above $100 is taxed at a rate of 40%, a marginal rate of 40%, and so you would owe $40 on that second 100. But you are paying $40 of tax on a total income of $200 a year. That means your average tax rate on $200 of income is 20%. Let's extend the example to, to emphasize the point. Suppose there's another tier. Suppose above $200 a year, the marginal tax rate is 50%. Then an individual who earns $300 a year will pay 50% of that last $100, which is $50, 40% of the second $100, which is $40, and that gives him total taxes of $90 on $300 of income. That amounts to a 30% average tax rate. So now we understand the difference between the marginal tax rate and the average tax rate. Armed with this information, then we can now discuss efficiency. The tax that is due is the average tax rate multiplied by the tax base. But the benefit to the tax authorities, the goal that the tax authorities would like to achieve is not 
going to be all of that tax that is due. For one thing, the tax has to be administered and has to be complied with. The administrative cost is incurred by the tax administration because it has to pay for the personnel and the office rent and the supplies and services it uses to administer the tax. It has to have, it has to have staff who are checking how much tax is due from each individual, checking the tax remitted to see that it is equal to the tax that is due, to process refunds or to send out bills for the extra amount if the two don't line up. The administration of the tax has a cost and that uses up some of the revenue. On the part of the taxpayer, there is also a compliance cost that the taxpayer has to you know, keep records to know what he has earned or how much of the activity he has engaged in. Then he has to fill out the tax forms, whether on paper or online. Then he has to file the form. He has to remit the tax. And for a lot of taxes, there is complexity involved in knowing what is taxable and what is not. So this cost to the taxpayer of being compliant also counts against the total revenue that is going to be collected because that is a loss to the economy. That is resources being used up because of the tax and those resources are used up not in producing anything of direct value to the society but just in complying with the tax. So the cost to the tax collector and the cost to the taxpayer make up the cost of administration and compliance and that is subtracted from whatever benefit the tax authorities get from collecting the tax. Then there is the structural distortion to the economy from the fact of a tax. When a tax is levied, it puts a wedge between the amount that the purchaser ends up paying and the amount that the supplier ends up receiving. That wedge is the amount of the tax. It reduces the amount that is traded and creates a deadweight loss. The deadweight loss derives from the fact that that lost number of transactions are actually valued by consumers, by purchasers, more than, it, more than they cost to supply. And so it's a loss of welfare because the tax reduces the amount of activity that is taking place for this product. It distorts the economy. It disincentivizes the production and consumption of a product that the society actually values at more than the cost of production. So we end up producing and consuming a less valuable and less desirable set of goods and services. So if we want to assess how efficient a tax is, we need to take account of the cost of administration and compliance and also take account of the distortion to the economy. And when we do that, what is left represents the efficiency of the tax. So the most efficient taxes are the ones that cost little to administer and comply with and also minimize distortion to the economy.